Just you and him? Yep. Somebody found him down near Baltimore. This one? Yeah. Old box up. What took him? Heart. He was 70, 70, how was he, 73, I think, or 74. Oh, his heart was in bad shape. It's terrible. Somebody else who found it. Yeah, that's just me and Jerry. No, uh, that's just me and Jerry. Who's Jerry? Jerry Markham. Oh, okay. he died. So he's Who's playing that lead? Is that you? I'll buy you that. I'll buy that from you. I don't have the money. I'll come back and get it. beginning and tell us when you first met John Fahey when it would have been and circumstances summer of 59 actually why don't you start I first met John like that that would yeah, be good I met John Fahey it was in the summer of 59 I think. and then he came up again after that brought his guitar up started playing and then uh, what'd you think about his picking oh it was good and then um, in the uh, November of 1959, uh, he made his first records for my phonotone label. Six titles were cut that night. And um, we decided to put him out as Blind Thomas. Yeah. Okay. And he Whose sang, idea was that? I think it was my idea. <clears throat> and so I got him to sing in a terrible voice. <clears throat> That's what sold the records. <laughs> the card I come in, the people come in, and I thought, oh, yeah, how much is that? I said, dollar. I'll take it. I want one of them, you know. So they sold real well. So then um, John what? came up after that. Then he did a lot of stuff, a lot of experimental guitar stuff. Some was released as uh, John Fagey. There was one, um, St. Louis Blues. I don't know how many copies that we sold, and there was a couple others. <clears throat> We're going to put them out on the CD. They're already in the works now. We're going to remaster everything. Um, and then he came back in, let's see, 1960 and cut a bunch of stuff. By then I had improved on the equipment, so the sound was better. 
and they sold real well. And then he came back in 61 and cut a whole bunch of stuff. Then in the summer, I believe it was, 62, him and uh, Mike Stewart came in. And uh, they recorded six titles. He did Green Blue, Stone Pony, and Some Summer Day. And then they did three guitar pieces, which they didn't have a title for. So I named them. Uh, Dark and Stormy Night Blues, and you know. <clears throat> and they didn't have a name for the group, so I said, well, let's call you the Mississippi Swampers. I'm you, yeah, man. I like that. I said, yeah, I'll put them out. And it was three records, six titles. And they were so real good. And that was the last I seen of John, because he left, I guess he went to California. I got a tape from him <clears throat> about a year later. Um, it was the only tape, too. I mean, it wasn't, he didn't make copies. It, um, it was Vic Fander. It was a young girl singing. Did you ever hear that? Mm -mm. Uh, Pretty Polly was one sign I can remember. <clears throat> and Faggy was playing the guitar. That sold real well. And that was the. Uh, and then I got a tape from him. About a year later, I guess it was. Uh, John Faggy Shuffle Band. It was some some record he made with a guy playing a. I think it was a tenor banjo, and I got playing a war sport or something, and Faggy playing this. It was pretty good. And, uh, <clears throat> so, what did that was the title? South, South Pacific Blues or something like that. I can't think of that, but I know how it goes, at the tune, you know. But And uh, <clears throat> that was the, uh, you know, last time. And then I had, you know, I'd, I heard from him maybe, oh, I don't know, 10, 15 years later, he called me one of the blue, and then that was the last I ever heard of him. So You didn't <clears> see him <throat> at the end when he was not oh, no, doing no, well? No, no, He told me on the phone he was coming to see me. Because mm -hmm. I got to see some, you know, old friends and old people, you know, and never made it. 